Alrighty then, so uh, that actually came off pretty easy. A little hint on the gland if it's not threaded. Um, don't just use a screwdriver or something to try to pop it out. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, screwdriver works, but if you just get in there and start trying to trying to like hack it out, it, it's not going to move good. But if you put a spanner wrench or a wrench on it, even though it's not threaded and actually turn it, um, that gives it some room where you can pretty much easily just push this by hand, you know, against the, the lip of this gland and it will just push down. But you can sit there and try to push on it all day long with a screwdriver and it not come down. But as soon as you start twisting it, um, you know, it, it's going to kind of break the seal and kind of go through. So just think of that when you're trying to get that off. It came off pretty easy when I did that. And, uh, this uh, cylinder tube is not lightweight, but you know, it's not heavy. One person can pick it up and slide it off. Um, I'm in no way a weightlifter or whatever, bodybuilder. That was probably, I'd guess, 40 pounds or so. I'm not sure. But anyways, it came off pretty easy once I climbed up there and pulled it out. Here's the end of the uh, cylinder stick, I'm going to call it. I don't know bore whatever and uh there is the the bolt holding that in so uh i'm gonna get uh, a pretty large crescent wrench and see how easy that's gonna come off this little piece here you can see it's metal there and it's got like a little plastic sleeves that go under it there is uh seals there and then uh there's one seal it looks like on this gland maybe more um <laughs> I need to clean that off pretty good to see if there's a second one, but I think there's only one seal on this gland. Anyways, one good thing to do that I want to mention is like this is a New Holland, so it's a name brand tractor. A lot of them are going to have at least parts diagrams of the uh, of the cylinder, the seal kit, whatever you need to order. So this one I just went and printed off the uh, exploded version of the cylinder to kind of give me an idea of the different pieces that I'm going to have to deal with. Oh yeah, I didn't look at the end. So yeah, there's also the dust seal uh, at the end of the gland that, that has to be replaced. So so you'll have to, essentially you take off this rear section here. These are all the seals of that after the, the bolt comes out. And then you pull the gland off and it's got one, two, looks like three seals on it. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. If you've got this pulled apart and if you feel a lot of wiggle in, uh, in your cylinder, mine was nice and tight. But uh, if you do, you can always replace these bushings also on the cylinder. But that's not a big deal to replace later either. So, um, you know, really it's just about pulling out part of this cylinder and replacing the internals. And uh, later, if any of these other things go off, you know, they're, they're easy to replace. So, again, I got that pulled apart. I got the tube sitting up here. Another note is, is no matter how much you think you've uh, tried to drain that cylinder, um, I moved it back and forth to try to get some of that fluid out. But... There's still quite a bit of fluid in there, so uh, don't mess up like I did. Put something underneath there. I can't stand spilling fluids. Uh, luckily, this is in a driveway area, so hopefully it won't run off into anything. But definitely uh, try to put something underneath that to, to capture whatever's coming out. And, uh, oh, one other thing before I really get into it. This is the seal kit that I purchased here. I mean, they'll come as a little pack. Came with a new... The retaining wire and everything this i bought from uh hw part store i didn't actually know they were in austin when i ordered online but uh so they were pretty close still had to pay more than i thought it was worth on shipping and everything i'm not sponsored by any of these people or anything that i mentioned in my videos uh if ever one day someone wants to sponsor a video of mine i'll make sure i say that up front in the videos but anyways this ended up being like 35 bucks i think they had probably the best price with shipping and everything included uh to get this rebuilt so that's it so i'm gonna start pulling that nut off at the end and i'm gonna replace the seals on those and uh, put them back on so all that although that uh, bolt on the end is nice and clean and protected inside of that tube i still had to use a 24 inch crescent wrench to uh to get on there and to break it free i still had to use this cheater bar because uh man that thing's on there pretty good and it's nice and tight either way so uh you still got to put a, a decent little lug on this 24 inch crescent to keep getting it off so just to let you know that uh this is a good tool to have uh again you'll see the brand pittsburgh i mean i got these from harbor freight for about 20 bucks a piece 
and uh, man I've used these crescents quite a bit for for tractors so anyways 24 inch uh, crescent wrench does nice on the uh, on the bolt all right so I've got the the gland off and uh, this was the the bolt that was at the end of the uh, main cylinder stick anyways it definitely had some loctite on it and uh, it's probably one of the reasons it had to have a cheater bar to get it off but anyways it uh, if you have some loctite put some back on i actually don't have any i didn't even think about that so uh think about that <laughs> when you're doing yours but uh, i'm gonna put it back on it should still hold i'll crank it down pretty good but uh you know we'll see i guess there's the gland with the seals in it, it looks horrible and uh these actual the uh other cylinder uh seals look pretty good and i'm kind of kind of tired of calling this crap the wrong thing so um i also printed when i printed the the blowout uh the the parts explosion of this uh printed out but all the parts are i guess yeah i guess they just call the chrome part the rod there's bushings there's the retaining wire there's the gland that's the end piece uh seals and uh Guess that's it so I guess that was pretty close it's just the rod and then you have of course the tube which is the main you know piece that's sitting up there so you got the rod and the tube and here's the uh here's a close-up of the rod I uh, left it on thank goodness I did because like I said it was a pretty good workout to get that that bolt off uh you know here I laid it lightly down on there that part's not really gonna tear anything up because that the uh, other part of the seal like the plunger part of the seal is there but um you know good again take take very good care of this uh rod it needs to stay nice and smooth and if you can see here it's probably one of the reasons i had such a hard time getting that uh the land out because there's there's some rust in there especially the way they did the retaining wire that hole i guess that's water whatever get in there and it was just quite corroded i'm gonna get a screwdriver and kind of clean that out pretty good and use some towels wipe it out i don't want to go too crazy because again i don't want to score any of the inside of the tube that's nice and smooth because then that just wears out your uh, seals more so i'm really just going to work on the end there where the wire went in and get it nice and clean and then uh, be done with it but uh there's your rod like i said i left it on the less i have to take apart the better and there's the tube and uh, as soon as I get these uh, seals redone, here's all the pieces. This is the kit exploded that uh, all the pieces, some small rubber seals, different pieces. Again, uh, this blowout's going to help because when I ordered it, it doesn't come with an instruction manual or anything. So uh, you really just need to pay attention to what you're taking off and uh, the order you took it off in and then putting it back on uh, the right way. But again, this uh, this exploded part of the uh, cylinder is going to help well and then if you have uh, for a lot of these little small seals if you have something like a, a pick works great if you have like a small this is like a pre precision flathead screwdriver uh, these are cheapy usually not warranted or nothing they're throwaway but this is one that I use to just somewhat as a pick to get things out so I'm going to use that and uh, you know, like I said fix the, uh, the gland and the diaphragm and then just put it all back together and uh, I'll shoot some of that. So this is just a quick shot of uh, the difference between an aftermarket kit and an OEM kit. So this was uh, the aftermarket kit I ordered for the um, for the cylinder and uh, it was just my first reaction was you know I saw online uh, OEM kits and people were selling them for you know 80 100 bucks you know with shipping and everything so uh i was thinking hey i found this one they advertised it for 33 dollars um you know tax and everything which uh we've got an ag thing and we shouldn't have really had to pay tax but it was really a pain to deal with anything like that here so i just did it um so 33 bucks for the aftermarket kit but after shipping and everything else because i don't know anywhere around here where I can just go in and pick up um, a seal kit, although 
this place ended up being in Austin, but uh, they didn't tell me that anywhere on uh, on the place where I ordered this, and I couldn't find it on their website. I think the only thing I could find was they were out of Houston, Texas, and then uh, this thing shows up, and it's actually out of Austin. Uh, it would have been nice if I could have just went by and picked it up. Um, it would have saved me a lot of time. But anyways, long story short, I'm going to go with the uh, non-tax, non-shipping price, 33 bucks. Right? Of course, it costed 45 when I was said and done. Um, you know, that probably should be put in there because I don't know where I can pick them up. You have to have them shipped to you. But anyways, 33 bucks. Um, this is what it came with. It came in a bag, in an envelope. Uh, nowhere near $8 shipping, but that's what they charge. And um, it didn't come, of course, with the actual plunger for the, for the cylinder. I mean, this is just, I've already got the the two little seals on here, which which were fine. I mean, there's a, a rubber seal underneath there, and then there's this band seal that goes right here. Th this black part here is part of the plunger. So anyways, long story short, um, there's two seals here, or two parts of the seal kit here. There's uh, the dust guard part of the seal, the C cup, and then some uh, miscellaneous gland seals and uh, the actual, um, rod the retaining wire that's on there so that's it that's all that came with the package no instructions no anything you know that's fine i figured i would uh you know take a look of at them as i'm coming off and then of course i went to the new holland website and printed out the the parts blow up and uh figured hey that would be enough now i went with this i had a lot of problems getting this c cup on um I was uh, struggling. I got the little tool that lets you bend the C cups and put them in. But no matter what I did, this C cup would not expand or, or at least fit inside of the groove that it needed to. It always kept having this uh, part bulging out no matter what I did. So I ended up trying to get a flathead screwdriver and pushing it to try to get it to finally seat completely in, uh, in that groove. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to seat perfectly where it was ready to go in. It still had a bulge sticking up um, where it wouldn't seat. So I said, okay, there's probably something wrong with this seal kit. You know, these aftermarket things maybe not that great. I said, to heck with it. Called up the local uh, New Holland guys and uh, ordered an OEM kit. Uh, luckily, they were able to get it within a day and um which was great and this seal kit 66 dollars and 41 cents now there's no shipping there or tax because i have uh my ag exemption with them and i have um uh they're just down the street they're actually on the way from my home to this property so i'm able to just pick it up they didn't have to ship it but uh the difference here is is for roughly double the price 33 versus 66 um i just like it better i mean just the oem kit first of all you know it's it's the parts that were meant to be put on here and designed to be put on this this uh tractor um but one of the problems i had is after fighting with this seal this c cup seal and just pushing and pushing and pushing i ended up kind of tearing up i don't know if you can see the insides, um, not this one, sorry. It's hard to see because it's not major damage, but when you're talking about high pressure, even just the slightest cut could be a problem. And there's some, there's a little bit of damage from me pushing down with the uh, flathead screwdriver to get it to seat. And again, it never did, so who cares? But anyways, it, uh, it ended up even damaging the C cup. Now, I've come over here and, you know, let, let me explain this one a little bit. You've got, first of all, you come in a large kit bag, right? It came in this bag with all of these little bags. So not only did that come there, but all of these are individually wrapped. All of them are individually have a part number on them. And they even send you information on how to get these put in, what order they're supposed to be in, um, you know, what each one is, why it's there. I mean, it's just a... Uh, a much more professional layout than this aftermarket kit which i mean come on how hard it would it be for these guys to make just uh, a simple schematic or, or diagram like this for each one of their seal kits you know it's it's probably pathetically simple 
and they just have to do it. I mean, if they're selling aftermarket seals, they should know details about them, right? I mean, I'm just thinking out, out loud, but anyways, the point is much nicer kit. Um, but what I also found is I opened this C cup here and I measured it against the ones that won't fit. And it's kind of hard to tell probably from the video because they have to be sitting right on top of each other. But the aftermarket ones are larger. I mean, it's, kinda, it's hard to tell here because these are on top. But if you lay these right, I mean, you can see this aftermarket kit, is, it's already got the little bulge here from where I've been trying to seat it in there. But these are slightly smaller than the aftermarket kit. And um, it won't surprise me at all if when I go to put these in that they seat just fine because they're the right size. And that for some reason you have to just work the heck out of these aftermarket ones to go in. And hey, maybe that's their plan. Maybe they decided that they're going to make it a little larger so you have to press it in there that much harder. But, um, you know, other than the, the seal tool that lets you you know, slightly bow these uh, to get them into, into the spot properly. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. Once you take that out, you know, they should be able to press into that groove properly. And, uh, and if I can't press it and I can't even get it in while pushing it with like a screwdriver to seat, then it defeats the entire purpose of it. But anyways, so my point on this is I am no longer gonna even jack around with aftermarket parts for the tractor unless there's a significant savings and uh, like maybe a starter, let's say, or maybe something like that. But uh, when it comes to little seals like this, where we're talking $30 difference, uh, I'm just not gonna jack with it anymore. It's, I probably worked on this seal for over an hour, which is well worth more than $30 of my time. So long story short, I am gonna go with OEM seal kits from this point forward. And um, like I said, they're just much more professional and you know at least they were designed for that specific tractor and that part. The people working on them hopefully had more knowledge um, about that than whoever imported these probably from China or whatever. So, And I'm not trying to say that this HW part store is a bad place or whatever. I actually haven't even reached out to them to find out you know, what the heck's going on with this kit. But uh, all I know is jacking around with that seal for an hour and still not being able to get it to seat is just nowhere near worth my time. So um, I will recommend OEM kits for pretty much any cylinder you're doing. So at least you know what you got. And heck, I mean, some of these things I still need to, I haven't read the, the schematics, but heck, I don't even know what this is. I, I didn't even see this in the cylinder. So, um, I'm going to look into this kit a little bit more. I haven't even started messing with it, but um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start putting all this together, get it on this cylinder, and uh, put it back together and let you guys know where I'm at. All right, thanks.